All right. Welcome, everyone, um, to the last community meeting in March, the first one after KubeCon Paris. Um, the usual um, housekeeping, this is a CNCF project. Um, so this meeting is governed by the CNCF Code of Conduct, which boils down to let's be excellent to each other. Um, and with that, let's get right into uh, into our uh, agenda. We have a couple of points, mostly stuff that I added, but um, uh, I basically picked up some things that were in discussion on the Slack channel and I just wanted to briefly discuss them um, here. So one thing here that we have is, or that we discussed on the Slack channel was Prow and enabling the lifecycle plugin for stale issues. Um, so basically something that I believe the Kubernetes project is doing. I know that we are doing it with our pro instance. Um, and we have a lot of like old issues. We have a big backlog. So the question is, do we want to enable it? Um, and then you also added a, a, a point. So maybe let's, let's discuss that first because I'm not sure um, what is meant, what do you, what do you mean here? So this came from. So we had a lot of issues which were left before from the time before the code base was split, before before Red Hat was involved, and all these things. I tried to go through the backlog and close manually some of them just to get to the manageable number. But there is still well, like 150 left. Most of them were decent issues which would be good to address if we choose to. So in example, there is a, because Red Hat used to use issues not only for the issues itself for a bug, but more for the work organizing. So there is not only like bugs, it's more like a epics, what we do with IPI lifecycle, like shard stories and things like that. So, I'm very pro to enable stale issues plugin basically to start cutting off something like uh, said six months, one year. But my question following is I want to replan the backlog basically to see what's what's the categories, what needs to be done. And just open question to the floor, what we do with once this plugin is enabled, it's been out, it will close some of the issues, there will be a lot of left. So what we, do we want to do something like categorize some different way or like API lifecycle, an example, there was huge epic, there's quite like 20 issues plus related to what to do there. So my question is what's, what we want to do. So basically, um, we're talking about like adding labels, right, to categorize issues. So I, I think we already have this concept. We have these area labels. Um, yeah, but they are very. There's a lot of them, to be honest. And there is like, yeah, there's a lot of authorization ones and everything. And I'm just thinking, what makes sense to have it to not to overcomplicate like topics and things like that. So I was thinking sharding API lifecycle CLI and try to put basically in these buckets and after that what's left is left. So it's it's like cleaner. We have three, bu three buckets where we put things in. If we need, we can create ad hoc ones, but these would be the primary ones. I mean, it, it makes sense to me to, to revisit the categories. So honestly, I think we, the area labels, I don't think are a bad idea. We just need to rescope them to like the categories that we need, the areas that we need. I could see maybe like a fourth category, like something like core, like, I don't know, like like the internal plumbing in a, in a bit. I'm not sure how to just call it. Um, but you know, everything that's not really visible from the outside. Um, we can do that. Um, we, I believe, uh, Christoph, do you know if we use the label syncer or the label syncing mechanism? Mm, no, 
show, not for KCP yet. Okay. As far as I know, but we can easily do that. Uh, actually, I think we do. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's this file at least in the infra repo. Yeah, but is it automated? Maybe. That, that I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me check. Um, but it's essentially, we already have. Let's see, do we have all the area? No, we only have one area label here. Okay. Um, in theory, this plugin syncs um, the labels for various repos. Yeah, yeah. There's a periodic job actually. Yeah. Syncing every hour. Okay. So I think it makes sense that we basically open a PR. MJ, if you have an idea of how you want to categorize things, maybe you can uh, open that. And then we, I think we need to basically prune all the old labels because I don't think the plugin removes them. Um, but then those that will stay are like put in code and everything yeah, else sense. can go. If people are fine, like with API lifecycle, shard, CLI, and core, and I will add something like other or misc, which we're gonna decide that for now. And I'm gonna if if one of you could enable the lifecycle plugin, so and if people not against that, I'm gonna do one more sweep through the backlog, try to create some dashboards, basically try to get it to the more sane place where we could see what's pending, what's not. Um Yes, I think the only thing that we need to do is you said like some of the issues are of like good quality and stuff that we still want to do. There's a lifecycle frozen label, I believe, that we can and I believe should use for these because I I've made the experience that you know the the issue authors are not always around anymore because well they their focus is now elsewhere and it's easy to miss basically that issues are being closed. If the author doesn't have time to, you know, keep them open, um, so yeah, I think if, as long as we do a sweep and basically label all the important issues, everything else we can reopen or create a new when we like actually want to work on on things related to them. Okay, label life cycle plugin and prow go over important issues and freeze them. OK. That sounds so like just, just here, You can delete labels via the, the mechanism, via the label sync. You can give a date and then it's deleted. Uh, and it's not just the plugin, it's probably also the periodic jobs. The plugin just adds the slash commands to GitHub, but the automatic labeling happens via like regular GitHub searches, and then the bot just writes a comment. So those are pro jobs. Not the plugin itself. So we, we also want that, right? That automatically after the issue ages for some days, that it gets marked as stale and then eventually is deleted. Okay. Good. Okay. Any other comments on? No, I will. I will do one more run. I will add some arbitrary label for like triaged 2024, something like that, so people would know if the issues were triaged or not. So we can share it in a Slack, basically. Yeah, I'm. Let, 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 let's maybe let's enable the plugin first. Um, then we can. I am not sure if we can choose the label. To be honest, I'm not sure if it has to be life, life cycle slash frozen. I'm not sure how flexible everything is. Um, if, before you end up with a label that we can't use, um, that's like, uh, the, yeah, it, like it's 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 not going to like close everything automatically. So yeah, enable first. That's for sure. Okay. Cool. All right, then. Unless someone has a comment on the lifecycle plugin stuff, I would. I don't, I don't know if this relates to the third point. Um, there is a very straightforward GitHub action that does all the stale stuff as well. So if you're just doing a thing on repo, then we'll make. But I'll, I'll digress this point throughout here. 
maybe why you're moving to crowd. No, it's a very good point. We we can switch around things a bit and basically talk about that. I the context is the documentation stuff. I'm not sure if there are any other remaining things, but right now we are a little bit split between GitHub Actions and Pro. Um, and I just wanted to basically uh, check in and commit to, you know, I think the answer is that we want everything in Pro. So the GitHub action for state issues might not be viable to us um, since also Pro has the same functionality. So I think I think it's OK. But I just wanted to check in. Does anyone have strong opinions here? Um, the GitHub action for documentation, I think it was mostly or it was left untouched mostly because well, it was sort of working. Um, and we're focusing on migrating the Pro jobs that already existed. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would hope that it also works on Brow, so. Um, are, there, are there any feelings at all regarding this? Or is this something that you folks mostly leave to Christopher and me to figure out? I like Brow. Well. Yeah, one, um, one feedback I have, so I guess maybe I can use quickly as an intro, like, hey, I'm Dave. I'm for uh, VMware now, Broadcom, so I know Nabarin and um, and team, et cetera. I'm, I kind of got yorked into their org, so that's why I'm kind of hoping PCP now, um, as an example, kind of want to learn the foundation. But my prior experience, and I'm not divesting from those communities, is like Key Native um, and Key API, especially. Um, I think I saw MJ at the end of the State API talks about the priority and fairness stuff too. Um, so Knative uses GitHub Actions and Pro. Um, the big motivation why we invested in GitHub Actions was when we we're dealing with the politics of Google and ownership of the Knative project. So like we thought it'd be easier to like divest from Pro and then just use GitHub Actions. Um, but now we've bifurcated our CI where we have some things in Actions, some things in Pro. And the only recommendation is just pick one and commit to it. The challenge with actions I find is that it just doesn't run locally. So unless you have those actions in both local scripts. Um, so there's like a catch 22 regarding that. Like for example, if you have uh, some security scanner that runs in a get of actions, like no user will be able to run that locally. <laughs> it's a lot of work. So. I think that's why we get her or the Kubernetes stuff, especially gateway. Like if you, and it looks like TCP has the same thing. So like all your verified scripts and stuff are just in the repo and then Prow just invokes it. So just maybe stick to that. Okay, thanks. And thank you for introducing yourself. We don't have a section at the beginning yet where, you know, we can give new people the, uh, the opportunity to introduce themselves, I should add that to the agenda. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's fairly good feedback. I think it's what most of us have, I don't know, feel like as well. But I think probably the K-Native experience is the most uh, um, comprehensive one. Yeah, the one the one thing some of our productivity people also running Prow were looking into, but they, they haven't done it, is in theory, suppose you can move Prow jobs to the repo that they run in rather than it being a single test in front um that might make it easier to like um update your code and jobs at the same time but again it's not really uh very important in my mind yep. in we already do that in in kcp um i think most of the jobs already live in the kcp repo itself okay, for, awesome. for that reason okay cool yeah then um, I will write down no strong opinions here. Um, probably best to move the remaining parts to Pro. And then we'll see as, again, everything is working, so it's not high priority. I just was curious because I saw the jobs and I was like, hmm, maybe we should talk about that. But unless someone has an opinion on it, I think that's concluding CI topics. I know it's not 
very exciting. Okay, then I have one last topic that I added. It's more of a seeing if anyone wants to collaborate. Um, I I'm taking a bit of a look at the documentation. Um, for example, some of the you know community stuff or community links that uh, Dave helpfully po pointed out on the Slack channel already, um, where things were missing. Um, it's, it's always let's say very easy to say, ah, oh, yeah, it's in the in the project readme. There we updated all the links, and then we figure out, oh yeah, the documentation has a copy of that. We should have updated that as well. So thank you for that, Dave. Um, and it basically triggered me to to. And I think this is a conversation that also was like briefly had at KubeCon. Uh, basically, I think the documentation needs some work. I would like to take a look at that. I have my first PR up that um, there's some updates to the way that the that some sim links or something like URL redirects are created in the documentation. So you always end up on the latest docs. Um, but yeah, I also want to look at bumping the theme and then probably reorganizing some content, um, writing some of the stuff that is in the to-do or that has a to-do section. Um, I was just curious if, if anyone has any thoughts on the matter, like if someone thinks or has thought about how documentation should be structured in the future, uh, and if someone has spare cycles that they would like to collaborate on improving docs. Um, what's funny, this is kind of timely. Um, Key Native has had a resurgence of our user experience working group, and they essentially um, revisited essentially the documentation, especially given we have different areas like eventing and things like that. Um, I can maybe point them to you, but I, I don't, they're like busy with their own full-time jobs, but I think one resource you could use is uh, they gave a talk in Paris about um, the process they did to improve documentation. So as an example, um, clustering topics, what topics are valuable to surface first and so forth like that. I can add it to the notes after because it's a good read. And they also included their email. So maybe they won't be able to kind of like drive the work, but they can at least maybe advise the work in terms of things to do. So for example, if you have um, a list of like the, your key native user list, you could source some people for interviews um, about the documentation and use their techniques and approaches to help improve that. I think so far it's been very positive, that type of work. Essentially they're um, like me based in Toronto at a artistic design school, but where they do um, this kind of user experience design practice. Yeah, I think we can, with our um, uh, well, limited resources, I think it's a good idea to learn from from the big ones here. So I would really appreciate that link so we can maybe have a better idea, okay, how should things be structured and what pitfalls should we avoid in the future? So that will help. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll dig up another link too. There is... Um a great framework to, to categorize the documentation like is it a tutorial is it something intro is it like a reference and i think like splitting the docs based on that is a good framework as well um i'll, I'll dig those things up and add it to the notes and that that that, that sounds super interesting because we uh with, with our own documentation we've historically struggled with that categorization so having a framework to go by is that that sounds very appealing. Let's put it that way. OK. Documentation. Many other comments, thoughts? Um, OK. Then, you know, PRs will just come as I make progress. Um, I will need to get some reviews from you all. So yeah, that one we can arrange. I hope so. Great. All right. Then we don't have any other topics on the agenda. 
but I also wanted to make a point. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning with uh, structuring meeting notes. I wanted to basically have this like any other business open floor thing. Um, you know, we're doing it informally anyway. Does anyone have a topic that was not on the agenda that they would like to talk about? Okay. Uh, yeah, MJ, you wanted to say something? I'm just thinking, is there anything to recap from the KubeCon? Ah, yes, that's a, that's an excellent point. Actually, I wanted to ask in the beginning, and then I went straight into the um, into the meeting. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not sure if there like we can maybe share a bit, little bit of perspective. Um, at least for me, it was a really, really great experience meeting all the people that were interested in KCP and getting some great feedback to and to the talks that we had at KubeCon. Um, it, yeah, I, I can rephrase these sentences for a couple of times, but it, it was really, really great. And um, I was really, really optimistic given all the people that talked to us uh, about KCP and their interest in it. Um, so it, it was great um, meeting you all, uh, especially if you like watching this video on YouTube. Um, Thank you for, for, for coming there and talking to us. Yeah, I'm not sure if anyone wants to. I, yeah, I have some feedback. Um, the talk, the KCP talk was great, um, hands down to everyone. It's so funny because I was watching it on the airplane and then I was like, oh, MJ's like changing his clothes, but I didn't hear why. Then I realized he's like uh, changing his clothes because he's changing personas like when he has a hat on and so forth like that. Um, I think for me, what I never clued in about Kubernetes was, um, it lacked, like, I think even though I've been doing Kubernetes for a while, what I never clued in was that, Hey, there was really only one persona it was catering to initially, which was essentially, Hey, there is some app developer, they create a container and they hand it off to ops people. And then that is essentially what, why, like the deployment is so complex because it's the handoff of this package to this operations team that is running this um, platform and, and hope and surfacing that. So seeing how just taking assumptions for granted that I didn't think of it that way initially, but then I realized like, yes, this is why, like, I think for the key native point of view, where like we have this higher level abstraction, um uh like for that we target app developers and separate out that uh app development app operator and cluster operator um so i think like digging into the personas is very uh like to your note important to highlight so it was a great talk the only feedback is um the um when you recap the video i don't know if it was because i was watching 480p on the airplane, but the text was very small and kind of hard to read. So I don't know if you just make your font size bigger, but yeah, overall it's great. So hey, good job, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, and I and I I also work with a team um, at VMware that is also trying to poke in and learn about um kcp they don't need to know the details of it but um i sharing that video i think is like good preamble to um rather than playing with apis first understanding that backstory as well i don't know if you surface that stuff on your website um that would be probably a useful thing to do because that's one thing that gateway api does is at least cover like these are our personas and these kind of motivate our discussions for a lot of the things that we do. I think that's a great suggest suggestion. Um, the personas would be giving a lot of context as to why KCP is useful to people. Um, I think they should be on the documentation for sure, but this might even be like main page, you know, high level kind of material. You can say, okay, I, I'm a developer. Oh, this this is my persona. This helps me. And or I'm a platform engineer. This is my persona that helps me. Um, so yeah, that, that's some good feedback. Thank you. Okay.
Does anyone else have additional? No, in, gen in general, I think it's like we've been talking about KCP for quite some time, I think Stefan longest. And I think for, for me, it's the first time when, when it clicked in a people's head and then when you have a conversations and everything. So this, this I think it's a, we just need to keep the momentum going basically. And I uh, talks is a very good place to start it. So one thing I have to do for my stuff is to, to push out the mount point stuff, basic code out because it's not yet open. But in general, I think let's keep the momentum going. If people want to talk about these things in other conferences, I think feel free to go. And I kind of feel that this is this is getting somewhere. That was my feeling too. And I think that's the best possible outcome. Um, for us from, from this conference. So it was really great. OK. Does anyone have additional thoughts on KubeCon, or does anyone have any other business that they would like to discuss? I just have a minor thing, kind of related maybe to the label stuff just kind of like skimming KCP repo. Um, I don't really see many good first issue. There's only like, I think out of 200 issues or 150, you only have five that are good first ones. Um, I kind of wanted to pick some of them up. So if there's, um, if someone's doing some roadmap cleanup, if you see issues, um, just, do you mind just tagging it and I can poke at it when I get the time? Yeah, that was on my radar. Like I want to get minimum like 20, 30 in that area so we can do that. Like I says, I have a long weekend ahead of me. I'm going to try to find some time to sit a bit and read yeah, through the issues and categorize them. I think most of us have the same long weekend. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, I think doing like maintaining our backlog, we can definitely tag some of them. Um, I think part of that is also sometimes fleshing them out more. Um, I think KCP probably has a very relatively high barrier to the first contribution because it's doing a lot of like API server plumbing. Uh, but the more we can help people here, um, the better and basically point out the ones that are have still like the lowest barrier to entry to start off with contributing. Yeah, we, we have the same problem with like key native because not only do you need to know, like you could approach it from the top and like do a key native only fix, but then in theory, like the a platform on top of Kubernetes. Um, so then in theory, you know, Kubernetes to be a uh, sufficient contributor of like to handle certain complexity, but yeah, it's, it's never easy, these things. Doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't mean we shouldn't uh, tackle them, though. So, yeah, good point. We have a very nice area. Like, our CLI is quite, quite uh, easy entry bar and exposes a lot of intricacies and details. It's like, so that area yeah. can cover almost half of the first good issue. I think that might actually be a great segue into looking at our incoming issues uh, because we actually have a couple of ones that are marked as new. We have been not doing this, I think, for quite some time because we had a low volume. Um, but I think MJ, you created a couple of ones. I'm not sure if we want to like discuss them too much. Um, I we still have time, so we can we can do that. Let me share. Um, but I also saw some new contributors, new faces here. So we can maybe start with this one. Um, so this is actually a good point. Um, I didn't realize it either, but we don't mention the Helm chart on the documentation at all. Um, our like trying KCP out is basically um, 
the front KCP start, um, which is good to getting started, but we don't have an installation guide at all. Um, so I am not sure. I think um, I can reach out to Pradeep and see he checked this box. So it seems he would like to work on this issue. Um, and then we can can see from where we go from there. But I think universally, this is something that we want to add. Even if we put a disclaimer on it, right? Hey, the Hammond chart, you know, um, isn't fully there yet. Maybe We're still like having a reference to that and basically showing a couple of steps um, would make sense to me. Yeah, I think this is being it out if he's interested in working on that stuff, like a Helm chart repository needs the same issue and like planning to be done. If there is somebody willing to invest time there, I'm happy to throw in a few issues there which need to be addressed. Like I've been working on the shard deployment for quite some time and it's it needs a bit more love. Yeah, I, I, I think the Helm shot might also be maybe a good place to open a couple of issues and put them as good first issues. Um, I think you can also have a filter over all GitHub issues in a in a in a, an organization. So maybe you also I'm not sure maybe the readme already links to that kind of filter, but if we can have some visibility on the issues in the kind of site repositories, um, that that would then help in addition. But okay, I will put this one here in backlog. And I will reach out um, and see if they would like to work on this. Okay, um, MJ, you opened this one. And actually, it's labeled good first issue. <laughs> um, so do we want to discuss this, this a little bit, or? Stefan, this is the one we chat about for the interact like current workspace three is a very manual command and i think in that interactive mode to go through the workspace tree would be nice and there is i saw already there was a draft pr something like that issue in the backlog from the old I, days yeah i can demo something maybe one second this is not in particular for kcp but something which I have in mind there, if I can share, one second. Oh, oh this terminal window, maybe here, can you see, one second, maybe. Uh, we... No? No, we, we just saw terminal icon and then it is. Yeah, yeah, right. I try again one second. Last time, maybe it works now. Oh, okay, I see. There's a different terminal. This is a terminal. You see it? Yes. And imagine something basically along those lines. One second, it's compiling. So something like a browser where you can go into. Uh, into basic workspaces and move around like in a file system. That was the idea. That's a prompt UI, yeah? Second? Library prompt UI. No, this is public here. Yeah. But there are a couple. Yeah. Yeah, but something yeah. similar like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, bubble T is a great solution for this. I built something with it. I never well unfortunately finished it, but it's it's a great way to to work on this, um, I can I can also add a link to the let me let me share my screen again. Um, but yeah, I think you know since we have been talking about you know workspaces being like a file system, the file browser is the obvious you know next thing to to have in a way. So here, let me let me share the link. Um, this is the thing that I use, and I'm happy to also help a bit with getting started with it because I found the learning curve a bit difficult, but then pretty much clicks and it's, it's, it doesn't feel like norm, like writing normal Go code, let's put it that way, uh, but it's it's fun to build UIs with it. 
Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, then I will move this to backlog. Um, then we have another bug. Uh, Rear Street does not work for home clusters. That will be fixed once the my PR with a VS with all this stuff gets merged. I need to address Stefan's comments, but that one fixes basically this one too. Okay, then you're gonna sign it to me. Then I will do that and just move it to in progress. Um, okay, now we're getting to like the older ones. I'm not sure if we need to triage them. Is this still valid, MJ? Do you know? Yeah, it's still valid. Like, uh, at some point in development, I hard coded, I think I even put it a line. Basically, I hard coded uh, in, in development, it's not trusting the certificates, and we need just wire in from the generated ones. It's just uh, housekeeping. Just to make sure that that code never slips in the production in any way. All right. Um, then I'll just move this to in backlog and we will get to it. And then we had the high CPU and memory consumption. I know that we discussed this PR already, so I don't want to get into it too much, but I believe we. Um, yeah, I think we talked about this in a community meeting. We said, okay, it's going to be like something that we're going to tackle after the 130 rebase. Um, so I will also move this into backlog. Okay, that's I believe it for for the incoming issues. With that, I will go back to the Google Meet. Uh, uh, to, to the Google Doc. Um, and basically one one last chance, does anyone have topics that they would like to discuss that just, we have? Just a question, because the, the last, um, you mentioned the 130 rebase. Because I went to, I think, Stefan's API machinery talk in Chicago when you said you pulled out parts of the Kubernetes API server into a library. Um, I'm assuming long term we won't need to rebase off of Kubernetes. You'll just be able to consume libraries. Um, how far along is that work? So Probably basically, like, yeah. the 130 release is nearly out. I saw a release candidate. So, master branch of Kube will open very soon. And we should push GRIFPRs in upstream, which basically are the lower part of our rebase, but a big part, and we should try to get stuff into cube. Everything we get into cube, we don't have to reverse anymore. So that's okay. And now it's the right time. The time is, I mean, we talked about that, I don't know, six weeks ago, before a release, everybody is busy and it's really hard to get big changes in because everybody, um, I mean, the revenue capacity is just limited. So now's the time. And I plan probably after Easter to start rebasing, making sure the PRs we have, like our upstream PRs are ready and I will need review capacity. So I will reach out to the KCP community as well. And let's see how we how far we get. And this must be an ongoing thing. Every time the, the master branch opens, we have to use that chance. And um, to, to your question, the rebase to 130 is basically a follow up. When those PRs are rebased, we can continue on the KCP side. I guess, I guess long term, though, are you going to be using Cube as just libraries only? Um, is that Was that the intent of pulling up the API server bits um, I mean, into a library? I don't think. 100%. I mean, this it would require that we get deeper changes in. Maybe we do. That's hard to answer at the moment. But the storage changes are basically what 
I mean, they are orthogonal to cubes uh, intentionally used. So um, they are more than just generalization. They, they are really something unique about KCP. So we'll see how far this goes. Okay. Is there um, like a specific KCP label or, or maybe a KCP project where you're tracking these open PRs upstream? No, we should do that in KCP though. Yeah, Maybe that's a good idea. Because I'm just kind of curious of so which one. So that way, I can just subscribe and and maybe um, Marvin, can you paste the controller runtime PR? Yes, let me let me find it real quick. This is, this is relevant, and we have to try to get Rabios onto that. I haven't seen any comments yet. I believe we are talking about this PR here, right? Two seven two six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a similar uh, story. We have a fork of controller runtime at the moment, and this PR is um, continuing what Vince had started uh, a year ago or so, and it has a design document. So if you have time, anybody who has time should take a look. And we have to get traction in the project, in the controller runtime project. So VMware still employs some people who are active there, right? So Stefan. Stefan yeah. Yeah. Stefan's there. Um, I think we used to have Vincent free, but I don't know where Vincent, oh, Vincent left. Vince moved to Red Hat. Yeah. I have a private I, 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 he's busy I, at the moment. But yeah, Stefan, I've tried yeah. to push, yeah, yeah, I've had even like trivial PRs in runtime mm -hmm. that have been open for like years and like, I forget their name, A starts with an A, this one person who's a more test yeah. yeah, and then also Vincent, he doesn't work at VMware, I've been a whole bunch of time to review it and it was just like, I don't know if they're swamped or it's just like there, but I, I know Stefan is at least, um, more engaged and more active. So I'm yeah. very happy he's still around. So if you have connections there, um, the design document maybe is a good start. Like they reviewed, uh, including him, they reviewed uh, Vince PR, which is linked in the, in the description uh, when he posted that. But there, there hasn't been a design document and Vince asked for it and have it now. So that's maybe a good point for review for Stefan. Okay, great. And towards that point, tracking this. So I don't know if it's a feature of the organizational-wide GitHub project, or if it's also something that we can just do in the in a project board for KCP. But I know that you can track uh, GitHub issues from other repositories and organizations on the board. Then you know, on the issue side, like nothing happens, but on your board, they are listed. So maybe we should start like a small little upstream board where we put these issues and then we can basically see, okay, where are these, where are they standing? Um, none of that. My, my only recommendation is use the org level project. That way any member of the KCP or can play with it. Otherwise, in order to be able to modify a project that's in a repo means you have to give them repo write access, which is something you don't want. I don't know if GitHub changed that recently where they made it more fine grain, but it was just much easier to do at the org level. Okay, that, that yeah, that that I guess makes sense. Um, but I'm not sure about the permissions either. So do you think that's useful that we have such a project where we track upstream across various, you know, projects and orgs. I think it is. Okay, then I can set something up. All right, great. And then MJ also had a question on the on the chat. If there's a community meeting for controller runtime that we could or should join to discuss these changes. Yeah, we're just thinking, is there anything where we need to join to push this one?
Okay, the answer might be no one knows. <laughs> um, yeah, may, maybe to to be uh, to be discovered. Okay, with that, anything else that someone would like to discuss or add to the to this recent topic to any other? Okay, seems that that is not the case. We almost filled the hour. Um, so thank you all for being here, for attending, and uh, have a great rest of your day, how long that might be. See you in two weeks. Have a nice weekend. Yeah.